Today we're going to talk about the principles of design. The elements of principles go hand in hand. So we've talked all about the elements of art. They are the foundation of your cookie. So this is your flour, your butter, your salt, your eggs. The principles of art are all of your exciting toppings. So this is the chocolate chips, the coconut, the oatmeal, the walnuts. So those are all the things that really add an extra oomph to your cookies and make them really delicious and more exciting to consume. So the first principle that we're going to talk about is balance. Balance is all about visual weight. So the first one we're going to talk about is symmetrical. So symmetrical is more of a formal approach to balance. So um, it evenly distributes on both sides. So as you can see on this guy right here, it is even on both sides, the same on both sides. Um, this is a more formal approach and it's common in Renaissance or Greek images. The next one is asymmetrical. So these are not the same on both sides. The weight is not evenly distributed. Um, and this is more informal way. It's generally more uneven with the area made of many small forms or counterbalance of a single large form. Um, ra radial balance is also another thing that you should be aware of. And that is when the balance comes from the center of the page. Contrast. Contrast is basically just differences of opposites. So contrast could be black and white. It could be contrasting colors. Um, contrast suggests differences between any of the elements. So it could be size contrast, color contrast, um, live movement contrast, tonal contrast. So any element that you can think of can have a contrast to it. For example, like apples and oranges. And contrast can really contribute to a good clarity in your artwork and a really strong variety as well. Okay, emphasis. Emphasis has a really strong focal point, okay? What main idea, what really grabs your attention? So it stresses the important part of the artwork. Um, you can do this by doing size or color or really just having a point where all the artwork comes together. So focal point is the emphasis. What are you trying to have your main idea to grab your viewer's attention? And pattern and repetition. So pattern is the repetition of the element. So it can really add kind of a element of beauty to otherwise like really plain canvas. And it is also kind of functional. Um, patterns are a basic part of art creation and they're really key to making handicrafts. They play a large role in ethnic and native art as well. And they can also um, you really use pattern to decorate various types of craft projects. So this could be a weaving project. This could be a ceramic project. So you basically are just repeating an object or its form as the pattern. So if you look over here, you can have patterns of lines patterns of shapes, patterns of colors. Um, for example, down here, the birds are flying in formation. That's a pattern. The cars are stopped in traffic. That is a pattern. Music has a pattern. So patterns are everywhere. Unity and variety. So unity and variety work really well together. So this basically just means parts work together. So variety is used to create interest, to create variety. Um, an artist needs to use diversity of the elements. So when adding variety, one has to be careful to make sure everything still is unified at the same time. So those go hand in hand together. You want them to be interesting enough that they have variety, that you kind of have a few different things, but you want them to also be unified and look like they belong together as well. So you can do different sizes, different colors, um, but you still want to have that unified shape. So for example, you can have a variety of people, but they still look unified because they are all still in the same style. You have a variety of insects to complete your artwork, um, but they still all look like they go together. A variety of pens, flowers, emotions, but you still, the key is that all of the parts are working together and unity and variety go hand in hand. So variety is used more to have a variety of different things and unity are when all of the parts are joined together. So you want to use those two together. Remember that you want to have them go side by side and hand in hand to really work together to pull off a really good artwork because unity is used to create a feeling of completeness, but variety is used to kind of make it more interesting. Movement and rhythm. This is more principles that go hand in hand together. So movement is where the viewer's eye is made to follow a path through the artwork. 
your eye will follow um, kind of a pattern that the artist has skillfully created. So you can tell your viewers where you would like them to look first. Okay, so rhythm and, move and movement are a regular repetition of elements of art can create a sense of movement and rhythm. Proportion. So proportion is all about size relationships. Okay, so proportion is a size relationship between two or more objects. It can be how the parts fit together to make a whole. So you can have a scale. There's proportion in um, portrait drawing. There's exaggeration. Okay, there is um, also proportions for kind of a whimsical way. So proportion can change the way you look at things. Accurate proportions are used to make realistic images and unaccurate kind of distorted proportions are used to make more cartoons and kind of make it a little bit more whimsical and fun. For example, like this exaggeration up here or these people hanging out on a hamburger, things like that will really help you kind of get the right um, concept that you want for your proportions. Okay, let's take a look at this um, painting. So this painting has all of the principles in it. So I, let's take a quick look at each of them. So it has really good proportion. So you can see how things are related to each other in size. So you have small people um, up on the stage, you have bigger people closer up. So those are different proportions. You have a lot of movement in this as well. Your eye kind of goes right to the middle and then it kind of goes to the sides as well, right? It kind of has this really good curve that offers really good movement. Contrast, it has contrasting in colors. It uses a lot of really dark colors and a lot of really light colors so that you can really see what's going on in this painting. Um, it also has a lot of repetition and pattern. So if you see all of these back, so you can also see that this has a lot of emphasis as well. So it has a big emphasis on here. And I'd also say on here on the crowd as well. So that is the main thing that you want to stand out. And then it's really fun to look at the small little details around. Um, this has really good repetition and pattern. You can see all of the balconies going upwards. That is really good repetition because it just has those layers over and over and over again unity and variety so it's united but things are still very different from person to person so that is a really good example of all of the people so if you look over here they're all dressed differently they are all very different people but they are united in their stylistic and also kind of their um, figure drawing as well balance this kind of has a asymmetrical look to it. So both sides are not exactly the same, right? One side is a little bit more curved and we are off to one side a little bit. Asymmetrical, remember, is both, same on both sides, or symmetrical is same on both sides. This artwork has a lot of really amazing balance to it as well. This is kind of a more asymmetrical look. Symmetrical is the same on both sides. Asymmetrical is different on both sides.